Where did I leave off? Oh, that's right. Our heroes had traveled to Amy Haddock's childhood home, an apple orchard along the river about a mile from Old Hellgate Village. It was here that Amy confronted his mama and his past in search of the reasons for his nightly terrors. Unknown to all, however, the past had some confronting of its own to do. Five figures straight out of a nightmare interrupted that family reunion in search of someone called Captain James Williams. Now, those of you who are well-versed in the dark history of Montana might recognize that name. For those of you who ain't, Williams is a veteran of the violent border wars in Kansas, who moved west in 58 in search of promised gold and silver to be found in the majestic mountains of the Montana territories. Instead, he found more dark, turbulent days of lawlessness. Again, he served as captain, this time of the Vigilance Committee, in what started as an attempt to end the predations of road agents, but awakened to bloodlust that led to the execution of some two dozen men for a variety of crimes. One hung just for disturbing the peace. By the end of that terrible winter of 64, there was a trail of death and violence from the gold fields of Alder Gulch to the dark forests of Hellgate and straight through the heart of the Deadlands. Welcome back, everybody. Well, look at that. Hey, 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 everyone's ready. Oh, it looks like Ryan might have Ryan froze stuff. on us. Oh, no. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, come, oh, we'll come to you in just a second. We'll, we'll come to him last, give him a chance to reboot. Uh, I'm going to start uh, with uh, Amadeus Amy Haddock. Say hello to the folks out there in the audience. Hello, all. Glad to have you back this evening for another, uh, I'm sure, exciting episode. Uh, I, Amy, is a little bit uh, like Ryan is in our game, a bit stunned and distracted <laughs> as we dive into it. Uh, I am Todd Moonbounce playing Amadeus Amy Haddock, uh, and I'm so excited to get back into this. All right, and then uh, going up around the clock, we're going to go to Bob Morrow. Say hello to the folks out there in the audience. Hello, hunting grounds. I am happy to be at the Haddock Homestead. I am Bizarre Hands. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I look forward to portraying Bob Morrow this session. And then jumping over to the other side of 12 o'clock, Jem Freeman. Hi, everybody. Candace the Magnificent here. Uh, back again to be with you guys tonight. I'm very excited to get into some crazy hijinks with these guys as uh, Jameis and Jem Freeman. Thank you for joining us. And lastly, we're coming back around to Clayton. Uh, oh, we're all out of position. Um, uh, coming around to Clayton McTaggart. Um, are you back in the chat yet? That does not sound like it. There okay, he is. Yeah. Now. Hey, there you are. Here we go. Sorry about that. I, I no problem. No Happened at just the right moment to be funny. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What's up, everyone? I am Ryan Howard, the creator and host of Rolling Bones with Ryan Howard and the person with the most malicious computer on the face of the planet, apparently. <laughs> uh, and I will be playing Clayton McTaggart this evening. All right. And I am Cheyenne Wright, your marshal. 
Well, like uh, that other guy who does the intros said, we left off right in the middle of a showdown between you and some ghoulies that appeared out of the dark, um, possibly following you from your venture into the edge of the hunting grounds back at, that, at Council Hill. Perhaps they're here for some other reason. You haven't really had a chance to find out. A so shootout has occurred. Yeah. yeah, maybe they're just late for dinner. Uh... But uh, two, you took out two of the five, still three on the board. We'll go to that uh, speak and we'll go to that board actually here. We left off last week right in the middle of the fight, but the, the, the magic of foundry and a good deck of cards, uh, we can pick up right where we left off here, starting with another round. I'll be ready. Uh, well, now, uh, before I move on to the next round, Amy. You you critically failed your fear check, and we rolled on the t fear table last week, and you yep. got the result. Mark of fear. Yep. I've been racking my brain trying to think of something that isn't a uh, shock of white hair, which is the most common result to that sort of thing. So, and at this distance, um, I came up with two ideas, and I'm going to let you pick. Either um, I'm, um, all the blood vessels in one eye just burst and that eye is red forever. Or you manage to look away in time and now can't ever quite make eye contact ever again with folk. With with anyone? Yeah. Hmm. Can I have a round to think on it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you yeah. have to the end of the you have to the end of the combat to okay. and we'll find out how how it is. I'll okay. let you decide and surprise us all. All right. all right. Here we go. Next round. High card goes to the leader of this uh, group of ghoulies, which is, you know, I'm uh, I'm so happy about that. So, unless anybody wants to spend a Benny to s try and get dealt another card, I'm going to go first. No. All right. You know, actually, I will. Sorry. Yeah, you, you got you're right down there at the bottom of the round. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll, I hopefully I just shake my stun, but I'm going to do that. Um, oh, yeah. And let's make sure uh, everybody's Benny. Uh, Benny's reset. No, they are not. Bob, you are no Benny's on your sheet. Quickly go through everybody's character sheet here. Yeah, you're good. I need one. You need, you need one. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. That's all right. That was me. Um. I can, I got to set up the proper Bennies now that I, I, I haven't changed the Benny image. I think from the player game. menu, Cheyenne, you can refresh all right off off the bat. Uh, it doesn't seem I haven't seen it working on the character sheets very well. OK. Um, yeah, uh, so that's why I try to just do it all manually. It's probably slower, but I'm methodical. All right, so uh, spend a Benny, and I give you a new card. Let's see. Oh, uh, draw a card. There are no available results in which to draw a card. That is weird. Probably because the, the deck needs to be... That doesn't make sense. Yeah, should have reshuffled top around, no? Yeah. Let's see. Hang on, let's see. See if I can reshuffle that deck here. Hate that it uh give us this problem right off the bat. Uh after I pushed the idea so easily. Alright, so uh let's see. Deadlands action cards. Now that's the wrong thing. I want the roll table decks. There we go. And let's reset the deck. And now let's give that a try. All right, so. Draw a card. There we go. That gives us one. Yeah, get upgraded to the eight of diamonds, which Josephine also has. So the haddocks are both going on the eight of diamonds. Boundary's weird that way, I guess. Um. Did you write, did you click my name in the combat uh, table to to draw a card that way? I think yeah. you're drawn from a different deck. Oh, okay. To have a duplicate result like that. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. We're going to go with it. I don't mind. It's fine, yeah. Um, all right, so still uh, the uh, the feller in the lead gets the, uh, the high action here. And uh, he, uh, well, that's right. So he is going to step forward and from uh, his outstretched hand, actually, let me check the, the range on this here. Uh, just so I can remember. Yeah. Range is reach of four. Okay. So real quickly, I just want to make sure. Yeah. All right. So he reaches out one hand and uh, it what appeared to be empty a moment ago, a rope just sort of materializes from it as he, as he, as he lowers his hand and then he, he whips it over his head and uh, calls at the the feller who just gunned down one of his uh, one of his men and says, "Hang him high," and whips out the his uh, rope at you. Me? No, no, no. At um, at Bob Morrow. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Sorry, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> That's a be. All right, and with a five, that'll hit. You feel the rope just sort of like uh, wrap around you and he yanks on it. Um, immediately, uh, well, doing two different things. It, it's gonna deal damage to you. Uh, unlike a normal Larry in it, Larry, it immediately deals damage when he pulls on it, uh, which is not working for some reason. Ah, oh, that's why. Okay. Hang on a second. His is special. Let's try that again. All right. So uh, you feel the, la- the the rope tighten around uh, around your neck as it as it loops in and. Uh, begins to suffocate you, uh, dealing a wound of damage. Um, no applying way. that, and you can try and soak that if you like. Oh, um, reckon I will, yeah. Um, from the chat window, can I click on one wound? Uh, um, well, to, that apply if you look at the chat window, there's a, there's a card that says, uh, you've been damaged for one wound, and then there's a button for a soak roll. Soak roll, okay. Um, I don't know. Bob, Bob might hear um, the uh, vicious uh, exhalations of some sort of beast, um, but he's got a minus two to this soak roll as he tries yeah. to uh, fight I'm for aware. breath. Should be applied. Yeah, that is not a success. You want to try again, or spend one of the many uh, uh, party bennies that you guys have been racking up over the uh, over the episodes? It's not on the party. This is this is on me. Uh, okay, you got like eight that. people yeah, in the people in the hunting grounds have been have been throwing all sorts all right. of resources at you guys. Very yeah. well. Uh, you're sitting on like uh, seven. You're sitting on like seventeen bennies from the hunting well. grounds right uh, now. The spirits are trying. Was taken yeah. away from uh, Jem trying to get uh, get a piece spec into. <laughs> right. Monaco, so the spirits are, are trying to help you. So, <laughs> um, can I can I trigger that from chat or uh, no? You just say so, and I'll trigger it. Please spend a party okay. Benny with thanks right. to the dice barbarian. Okay, so on that same um, on that same uh, window where you just roll, roll spent a roll of Benny. There's a button next to it. it looks like a backward bending arrow. That's the free reroll, which is what we're going to use. Thank you. We'll apply that now. Mm-hmm. And roll very well, I'm sure. There we go. Yeah, there's an ace. Yeah, yeah, and that that is a yeah, that is a six. Even with a minus two, uh, that would be a success, and you do not take the wound. But you are still, however, trapped in the lariat, and right. uh, which means it's nice that... to see the tables turned on Bob. He's the only one that's used a lariat previously, so he should be tied up. <laughs> All right, so 
with it all with, uh, with that you are uh you are bound um you didn't get a raise on you so you're just uh uh entangled that's right oh that's what it was i, I changed the, uh, never mind all right I'll, I'll fix that i'll fix that in the future but yeah there we go so you're um you're you're bound up in the in the lariat and uh and you can the the cold that, that that sensation when the rope tightened around you was that same cold chilling sensation that you got when one of them touched you but he's apparently able to do it through the rope wow all right and you are uh yeah bound with uh, sorry entangled which means that you're uh distracted is that right uh, and uh, um, uh, I, can, I can look that up yeah, I believe it means that you're distracted uh, be, uh, by the by being entangled, and that but you could still, you know, take actions, do whatever you want. You don't have to break free if you don't want to. It's just whatever you're going to do is at minus two. Distracted right. is minus two, right? Yeah. And the other one that's going to go on this card is uh, the one in front of Amy. Uh, sorry, it was the one in front of Jem, who's going to try and uh, claw and bite at you as well. Uh, there, Jem. No. Um, reaches out with his chill of the grave. Uh, but I think a six is going to hit. Yeah. Yes, uh, a six is going to hit. Four. Ooh. Twelve damage, which would be, as you feel the another, again, as he reaches out his clawed fingers um, uh, sink into your um, sort of like almost you see the hand almost kind of go through your shirt and into your flesh, and you can feel this spike of ice kind of flow out from, from uh, radiating out from where the bones touch you. Uh, and you can also try and spend a Benny to try and soak that. You can spend yours or any one of the ones from the party resources. So I spent one of mine, but I meant to spend a party Benny. Okay. Can, uh, I, well that... can I spend a Benny for that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. You, you, uh, you want to, that one does not succeed. You want to, and so I'll throw it, uh, this party Benny down if you want to try again. Thank you. Yes, please. That All was right. Terrible. Yeah, it's a rough start. Still oh bad. Oh my god! I'm gonna do well, another hang on. one. Hang on. You did roll a three on that one. If you take a plus one, that'll be a success. Then yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll just take off a. Take off one of the plus ones, and uh, that'll be enough to wound and uh, and remove the and prevent you from becoming shaken as well. So there we go. So you're not wounded, and all is well. All right, and that is those two. For some reason, the the third one is uh, not part of the group. I don't know. He's strange. Uh, but Clayton, you're up next. Alrighty. So, uh, I'm going to take my full movement. So, see, that'll put me right about here. And from here, we'd be looking at... Okay. So, uh, first things first, I'm going to target uh, the one that is right here up on uh, Jim. Mm -hmm. And I will shout nice. out to my friend Duck, and then I'm gonna take my first shot. All right, quack quack. That Very looks nice. pretty good. Oh yeah, that's a hit and a raise. All righty. All right, and with that one, again, as I described it from before, as your bullet kind of goes tearing through the air and, and across these things, they seem to, like, shred, like, um, when you're doing, like, target practice when you're shooting apples off of a fence. They just kind of bits and um, uh, fly in all directions in this big sort of gray-white pulp or tearing of, of, of um, cloth and in one moment they're there and the next moment they are just vanished and gone nice thank you kindly 
And then I will turn to take my second shot on uh, this guy that's off to the side here. That would be a and miss. I will, uh, let's spend a Benny from the Spirit World to reroll. All right. That. All right. So just click there, the Benny from the Spirit World to spend and click the uh, the free reroll button. Okay. Again, oh, that's a three. Um, you get a minus one from something. Uh, or from, oh, you're minus two because from range. He's just outside your range. Ah. Uh, let's see. Would that, would a plus one, uh, that, that bumps it up to a four. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a plus one there. Okay. All right. Well, this will remove a plus one and you can roll damage. All right, so that would be, all right, so that bullet lands um, with a little tweaking and a help from the hunting rounds. That bullet lands sound and true. And, but you see, it seems to only briefly phase him for a moment. His, huh. the, the lariat goes slack and, uh, but he does not stagger back from the shot or lose grip on it and in fact he kind of uh, in in layman's terms he is much shaken by that shot and you know you hit him good and square all right so uh, let's bring up the next round so next up would be uh, Major Owen who is currently trying to aid uh Amy in recovery. He's gonna do. He's gonna try and do what he did last time, um, and give you a little bit of a, a boost on your recovery roll. And he's just. And I'm gonna let's see how well he does on that. Yeah, still not that great of a in giving you the confidence. He's like, come on, come on. Uh, you know, uh, you. you this thing is, look, there's only two of them left. You know, your friends are doing a great job. You should probably really help them out there. Uh, um, otherwise, it might look like you're just uh, too afraid to, and you wouldn't want that, right? What would they say about you? Um, not inspiring you with confidence. <laughs> um, the third one uh, has a chance to go. He, seeing that uh, uh, Walsh is... Uh, tied up decides to head out after or sorry Bob Morrow I gotta fix the tokens there uh, he decides to walk away and head towards uh, uh, Clayton or actually no he's probably gonna have to go after Amy because it's just right there he steps he steps over takes a claw at Amy Jim I think you mean sorry Jim I'm Sorry, I keep screwing that up. He lunges over at you, takes a swipe at you with a big a wide claw, but it's clearly telegraphed because it comes swo swooping in and you uh, you take a step back and just, just out of its reach and you felt the touch of these these things uh, a couple times now and you were definitely trying to uh, prevent that from happening a, th a third or fourth time. Takes a swing, misses, and... Josephine and ha a uh, Amy both get their go. Amy, you want to uh, go first or you want to go after your mom? Uh, I'll wait. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I kind of I'm just in unintelligibly on my knees uh, just trying to deal with things. So I would expect Mama Haddock to maybe Try and do something. She steps out onto the porch. Uh, she is a, uh, with a with a shotgun that she has apparently kept somewhere in the house. Uh, not pretty. Uh, not something that would be terribly effective at this range, but it is an intimidating thing nonetheless. And she levels the barrel down at the uh, the feller with a lariat, 
and uh, says, basically commands him to get the hell off my farm. Um, and she's just going to uh, make an unskilled or uh, an intimidation roll against him. Yeah. He appears to pay her no mind. All right, Amy, you're up. All right, top of the round with the vigor check, trying to shake this off. Mm hmm. I will take a plus one. All right, take a plus Glad one. one. You there are that. So uh, I am no still distracted. Mm hmm. And I'm also vulnerable when I come out of that. Okay. So I add that. So vulnerable and distracted. Uh, they fade at the end of my next turn. Uh, with that, oh, not, turn... Not, at the, not at the end of this turn. Right. Nope. Next turn. Okay. And so, uh, turn proper. I will stand up uh, and pull up my rifle and. Yeah, I'll just um, I'll take a shot at the guy that's uh, out in the open. Attempt to. Okay. And... All right. So you you raise your Winchester. Okay. Uh, four, that will be a hit. Roll right. damage. And, uh, see, 13. Uh, shot, I, I've got a, I didn't get the audio, I didn't get this little special effect I tried to put on those things. I'll fix that. Note. Um, so, you, you pull the trigger, shot rings out, um, strikes the, uh, uh, the feller in the chest, he kind of like jerks to one side and then just kind of writes himself. Otherwise unfazed by the hit. Need something more than just these really bullets made of these days. See, the, uh, the other things all seem to go, go down under normal mm -hmm. gunfire, but he appears different somehow. All right. Uh, Walsh, you are caught up in the rope, but you're not prevented from taking an action. It's just whatever just you try and do is at minus two, which includes trying to break free two. if you want to free yourself from the lariat. I think we're going to stay, let let that lariat rest upon his neck okay. and uh, bring that Gatling pistol to bear upon uh, Skinner, that, uh, that one okay. standing on his own. Uh, ammo Whammy is still in effect. And I reckon Ghost Bullet is tempting, but I reckon I'm going to go Argent Agony uh, for uh, for this attack. Okay. See what see what that happens. It's going to be at a minus four because we've got um, uh, the recoil as well as the distracted penalty. All right. Uh, will it? It's going to apply the distracted penalty automatically, so it should it just will. be a minus two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and just click shooting. Don't forget to do that. Uh, the item action. I gotta. Right. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And it should fire the full three round burst of your Gatling pistol. And we'll see what happens. Should be coming up. All right, so there's a quick brat, brat, brat. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that one's set up properly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, only one bullet comes close to hitting. Would you like to spend a uh, a plus one in order to make that hit? Because you got a, uh, you got a, I think you got a zero. I'm not happy with those rolls. Yeah, I, I reckon, I reckon I can do better than that. You want to spend Benny to do it all? You want to spend one of uh, yours? I'll spend one a of personal the... Benny. Yep. Okay. And re-roll with a Benny. There we go. Uh, that again is still roughly the same outcome. Yeah. Only one comes close. 
Um, our plus ones are at nine. We've got, we've got, a, we've got a fair stack there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if if the party doesn't mind, I will take a do plus it, one it. just to have one hit. All right, sure. All right, so uh, roll hit. Uh, uh, roll as if one of them hit. All right, this will be silver if applicable. Come on, Ace. There we go. All right, and that is a. Uh, and so and this is so this is a silver or bullet is that what you said or is a argent agony yeah argent agony it's just yep. what uh, counts as uh, whatever might being as though it were composed of its weakness right uh, okay uh and i'm and i do have to know its weakness so at this point we'll guess that uh it is silver okay well um whether or not it is it's true and ultimate weakness it does seem to actually cause pain in this thing. As the bullet uh, slams into him, you hear it. You hear him curse and cry out, uh, as opposed to just stand there and take it from the previous two, the previous hits, and it's just like, ah, what was that? Uh, and he staggers back a moment and takes a wound. All right, uh, Freeman, you're up. I would like to use my tomahawk and try to take this guy out in front of me. Okay. Uh, four will hit. Awesome. No, no, I'm sorry. It will not hit. I'm will not hit. I was it thinking of a ranger. I was thinking tomahawk like you were throwing it, uh, which is. Um, not what you oh, were I doing. Oh, I forgot You're... to select my melee anyway. Um, okay, so yeah. let me, can I do that one more time with a group any? Yeah, sure. Cool. Six will hit. There we go. Awesome. All right, so, and with a, a 11, that drives the, the tomahawk deep into the, uh, through the flesh of this thing. Flesh is a term I'm using loosely here as uh, it seems to almost feel like you're tearing through sackcloth or something with the, with the, as you actually feel it rip and tear asunder and just kind of like unwind as you go through it all. And then it's gone as if it was never I there. Would, I'd like to also move on my turn and just try to get some cover. Okay. Cover from that one guy that's left. Yeah. I don't know if, if, if someone's going to get to him before he gets to me. All right. All right, so I'll go ahead. Give yourself a move. There we go. And, and we're going to move into the next round. Rob Morrow, uh, Morrow you pull the red joker. Oh. And the ba main bad guy oh, pulls the joker black too. joker. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> So uh, there is no difference or, or order in in between the two, even though it places the red joker above the black joker for reasons. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have an uh, opposed agility roll to see which one of you actually gets to act first. All right. uh, uh, figure. Uh, the mysterious figure rolls a six, and you... Oh, yeah, he's going to go first. Um, although, and so all he does is, well, first he has to recover because he was actually shaken by all your various attacks. So he has to try and fix that first. Yeah, um, he rolls, uh, he rolls an eight and is no longer shaken, may act normally. Um, he just tightens the uh his grip on the lariat and uh, and the the chill flows through the rope once again for the worst possible damage oh. uh actually that wasn't an even that was a did i, did I roll the i rolled the uh, the attack roll which is not what I, I wanted i wanted the damage roll but the damage roll was this would have been the same amount and i'm gonna go with it for two points of damage so does not affect you it's not a critical it failure. Damage? Okay. Huh? It wouldn't have been 10 damage? No. Okay. No, no, no. Right. All right. Not so, a critical failure because it's just damage. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Yeah. Technically, you would have gotten a plus two to that four, but that still wouldn't do enough right. to 
even shake you. But um, All right. So that's his go. What are you gonna do? Cinematically, I, like after a, a poor damage roll like that, I feel like Bob mm -hmm. might reach out for the the lariat and just start pulling Skinner towards him. Okay. And he probably probably doesn't budge, but he just levels the um, Gatling pistol again and no, finishes a... off the clip. Okay. If you actually want to try and pull him forward, you can make an opposed roll. Uh, um, no, I think I think it's more okay. cinematic. It, it's no, cinematic. You no just grab the rope, and we can see the black veins that spread out across your hand as you're holding on to the rope. As the chill and, spreads into his and, 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 and the ice that begins to form across your knuckles as you raise the, the Gatling pistol with its last load. All right. Again, at a minus two on account of that lariat. Gotta be better this time. Oh yes, nope. it is. In fact, uh, oh, two go. of those Double bullets up. hit. Excellent. So yeah, oh, and click, it, just click I, the damage. Failed, and it, hmm? Okay, I failed to define it, but I was intending to go with Argent Agony again because it had I figured, seemed to hit I home figured, last time. I figured okay. that was the case. So, all right. So, uh, Ooh, one... almost as poorly as he did. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you can choose uh, to reroll then... that or move on to the second hit we'll move on to the second shot and save that benny for a, an action okay oh that one also oh, that, that one that one would be the second one would be enough to shake him um maybe maybe i'll no we, oh um there's no bonus to damage for jokers i guess uh it should be a plus two is it not included in that uh, it, it did well be. No, it, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. it the was included in that. Yep. It yeah. was fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll spend my last personal Benny on that. I reckon. On that that second roll or on the on first the second one? damage roll or, 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 or I think it's too late to go back for the first damage yeah. roll, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I will uh, roll the second one again. Okay. Yeah not just expected uh, that it's one point better but not enough to beat his toughness <laughs> uh, i mean they both neither they both of us hit, can hurt each other they both hit the toughness but neither of them get that raise let me put it that way all right, all right. so you, you, you more bullets slam into him and you hear him grunt under uh under the pain but he also holds on to the lariat at the same time all right josephine cocks the shotgun and begins walking out in off the porch towards him um this range she's gonna try a uh uh hang on now, this at this range she's st she wants to get good and close with a shotgun to really uh make the most use of it so she's she doesn't fire just yet but she's gonna try another um intimidation role she does so she um reaches out and see how well she does no nope, no nope. she says let go of him drop that rope it's not very convincing um major owen uh has very little to do he just kind of falls back uh and clayton you're up all righty so i'm gonna move a little bit closer to him so that i don't Keep getting that range penalty. Okay. And this should be good now. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely good. So let's give it to him. All right. Uh, four will hit. All right. Damage for that first one. Six. 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 Again, it, it slams into him, but he seems to take almost no notice of it. Like, uh, he looks off in your direction with, with a snap of its of his head, but he makes no noise or just kind of returns his attention back tomorrow. Okay. Uh, second shot on him then. Uh, that right, one that is... Significantly better. Hit and a raise. Sweet. 
All right, on this, I'm gonna say this one definitely uh, glances off of his um, his head, and you can see the um, the uh, the sack cloth kind of like flies off as you as you do as you, on that second shot, and he turns and looks at you with one with a rotting face, half of it um, half of it completely devoid of skin, just a hollow, empty skull, and the flesh that remains covered in, in wriggling maggots. And he just kind of like, you know, uh, he's got a brushy, pointy mustache that kind of goes down to either side, points in points, and then and a broad grin that just kind of spreads across his face. Uh, but other than that, no effect. Ouch. Haddock, you're up. Would you say that we could perceive that Morrow seems to be doing a little bit extra? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to yell across. I'm going to just kind of pull my rifle down. Uh, as I perceive that my initial shot and uh, Clayton are struggling. Uh, but for some reason, Mr. Morrow is uh, getting through something we're probably going to have to have chat about later. And uh, I'm going to call across the uh, yard to to him to try and uh, inspire him, help him uh, in his next uh, shots and say, do not shoot with your hand. Those who shoot with their hands have forgotten the face of their father. Shoot with your mind. <laughs> All right. And I'll give a yeah, persuasion roll. All right, All right. And that plus is a two? hit and array. So that's going to be a plus two on the next thing that you do there, Mauro, whatever it may be. Uh, Freeman, you're up. Uh, man. Jem had a close brush with death and was a little freaked out. <laughs> that icy hand. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come peeking out right there. Just a little bit. Not quite where I was before. And uh I'm gonna shoot him. Okay. With um I have I, I think I had my Winchester on me when we went out for patrol and then my tomahawk at my side. Yeah. So I will use that. Okay. Uh let's see here. Uh, that I was can never know. That is, a, well, I mean, yeah, uh, that is a five. That is a hit. Roll damage. All right. So um, that would be enough to shake him. And he's already shaken. But he's in normally in Savage Worlds, that would mean you're putting another wound on something. But not on this guy. Not on this feller. Clayton, you get the top action in the, ne in the next round. Morrow's going to go at right after him. All righty. Uh, yeah, I doesn't look like I can do a whole lot to him, but, you know, Clayton's only got one speed, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can certainly always keep him shaken, right? Yep. All right, that is a good, solid hit. You you stare right down the barrel of your gun at this clearly undead thing standing up before you and try and put another bullet in it. This time, sure, you're going to end it. Roll with a hit and raise. I oh. am going to spend a Benny on that. <laughs> yeah, luckily you <laughs> cannot critically fail a damage roll. Uh... All right, so 15, you know, you know you got a good, solid hit. He begins to chuckle. Do your worst, boy. I got protection on my side. <laughs> I mean, he, he raises his second gun and shouts, Die, you son of a bitch! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Good and solid. Oh. 
Oh, so nice. Mm -hmm. Such good rolls that uh, such good rolls, <laughs> good rolls that don't matter. Four wounds into this thing, and he kind of kind of goes, and he kind of it snaps his head back, and he kind of like you know you know staggers for a moment, and then brings his head back up, and he says, "Where's Captain Williams?" Morrow, you're up. Uh, we don't redraw. I, I've, I went at the top of the round, but I'm happy to go again. You were second this round. Clayton oh, sorry, we, we did redraw. Apologies. Um, um, placing, putting away that that Gatling gun is that a, still a free action? Uh, no. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, it... yeah. It's free. You you can swap out weapons. No problem. Okay. So yeah, I think the uh, Gatling gun uh, heads close back to his chest, um, and uh, Morrow closes the distance, uh, adding a bunch of slack to the lariat. Okay. Um, and uh, on his way over, he uh, starts bringing up uh, his uh, Lamat Combine, uh, flips the switch for the underbarrel shotgun, and okay. brings it up as close to this thing's face as he can. What's uh, it loaded with? Buckshot or uh, uh, slugs? Um, I didn't. I didn't have, actually have the rules for slugs, so I'll assume okay. it's buckshot. Okay. Uh, and that's that's why he's he's closing the distance. Uh, as a free action, I'd like. I think I need to reactivate uh, ammo whammy because that I activated ammo whammy for the Gatling gun, so I need to right. uh, okay. try to get it again. All right. Just pull this up. Oh, that's not so bad. Well, with a minus four, that's still not a raise. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I failed to apply the minus two for being distracted, so that's not a raise. Okay, so not a raise. So which, just uh, one action, just one uh, effect from uh, ammo whammy. That's minus two on there. Uh, it was minus two because... Oh, wait, sorry, I apologize. I, I'm not, I'm not subject to recoil anymore. That's right. So yeah, that's two. right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beauty. So and, yeah, and right. distracted so, automatically applies in the battle rolls. It knows beauty. it's smart enough to do that. So yeah, that's right. a hit. I forgot the there was no recoil. All right, so we are loaded for bear and argent agony. So okay, uh, that upgrades it from uh, normally uh, shotgun blast at this range should be three d six. Three d six. Yeah, first you have to hit right. with a plus oh, apologies. two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was just my spell casting test, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, we got him targeted. At a plus two. Yeah. Thank wow. you very much yep. for that. Plus two uh, for the range. Yeah. Oh, and a plus two for the help from Amy, I think, as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So plus four total. Yep. Yep. And it'll calculate the distracted all on its own. Okay. So. Um. And it's going to be buck. Is it shooting buckshot or buckshot short? Uh, if it has a little target symbol. Both. And if it has a little target symbol, that's for the that's the shooting roll. So click that. Okay. And the buckshot okay. short yep. oh. is for the damage roll, which is going to be different because there... if you've if right. you upgraded it's, the damage. It's, right. It's going to be three d eight rather than three d six. Yeah. So we're just going to do that in the. Uh, uh, we'll do that. Right. I'll roll the damage for you real quick because I know how to do okay. it real quick. All right. So that is a hit with a raise. So forty eight. So uh, no. A raise adds a d6. Oh, only a d right. It's not subject to loaded for bear. Right. Yeah, I don't think that so. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So, uh, plus, and you're going to ace, and I'm just going to roll the dice for you. All right? Thank you. Real quick. And ace. It did not ace that. Uh... Oh, because it doesn't know it's a damage roll. Um, okay. So I'm going to have to add this real quick in my head. Uh, 16, 17. Um, oh yeah, there we go. And uh, then it aced that d8, so let's uh, roll it again. Uh, that is a, a 22, 22 damage against this thing. Oh, okay, yeah, that, um, and with that second, with that shot, that close up, all of a sudden you just kind of see him kind of like, the, the, the lariat seems to just kind of dissolve away around from you. 
from around you in much in the way that the, his uh, other associates did. And he staggers back and he looks down at his belly and he goes, ah, I'll be back and fades away in front of your eyes. Well, that's not good. That ain't good at all. Mm -mm. And with that, the farm seems to fall quiet. Bob brings his hand up to his throat and starts to warm up his flesh and his jugular. Takes a deep breath in. Maybe a little bit raspy. And I'm going to take us out of combat. There we go. Cards go away. Quick perusal around the farm afterwards, just to make sure that everything's clear and gone and you can't find, you guys don't find any other uh, oogie boogies waiting to jump out at you from around corners. Is that stench largely gone or does it linger? Yeah. It seems to also fade. It's it's there for a few, for a, you know, about a minute, but the, as soon as the next breeze comes along, picks up, it's all gone. I rush over to uh, Mama Haddock. Just, are you are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, friends of yours? Uh, not that I know of. Jim, Marl, Clayton. Never seen those guys before in my life. Who's Captain Never Williams? Seen nothing like that. Can't say I've uh, seen anything like it. Uh, as the the two Montana natives can give me common knowledge rolls to see if they remember any stories about Captain Williams. Uh, I am no longer. Yeah. All right, so let's see. A A A Amy Attic rolled a 10. Uh, got a hit and a raise on that one. Um, did I see... Uh, did I see... Uh, Gems roll? Because I don't... Um, I'm not spotting it here. Sorry. It's all right. You cut out for a second. Which one am I supposed to be rolling? Common knowledge. Got it. Sorry about that. It's all right. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Amy, you do remember these stories. Uh, you, um, you've been kind of obsessed with this the story for ever since you were a kid, uh, considering uh, all the events that happened uh, of the of the Montana Vigilance Committee. They all rode around hoods in hoods like that, keeping their identities a secret, except for Captain Williams. Every, Captain Williams stood as judge, leader of the the posse, and stood as judge in all the hangings uh, that they they participated in. He was the one who bore the responsibility for their actions, and um, you're not really sure where he is now. Captain, not having Captain Williams, Captain Williams, um, oh Judge Bill, I think we used to call him as kids. Yeah. All right. Captain Williams. Now, he wasn't a native of uh, this particular valley, but everyone talked about the Vigilance Committee. They rode all over the, throughout the different towns uh, in Montana here, hunting down ne'er-do-wells and putting them to the rope. Um, but that was a long time ago. That was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'll relay what I recall about that to the group some folk in montana considered him a hero other folks called him one to his face because that was the safe way any conversation that's had about that i think that uh gem is still pretty chilled um from that encounter um like I've seen things before, but never anything that was 
that ferocious, I guess. Um, so I kind of just like look at Amy and go, you know, you're all right. You, you feeling all right? That that was, that was something else, man. Yeah, just uh, I've never, never seen it. I haven't seen anything like that. Just somebody just disappear like that after a shot. I don't know, something just just didn't sit right. Mama Haddock, you ever seen those men around your farm before? Not around the, that farm, but that feller there at the end. With, I mean, the one that we, I don't recognize any of the others. They all had sacks on their faces, but that last one, she turns to Clay. When, when you shot that hood off, before he turned and showed that skull side of his face. Who swore that was Cyrus Skinner. Cyrus Skinner used to run a saloon down and over in Hellgate Village. Got killed by the vigilantes back in 64. Him and four of the men who worked for him. They buried him by the side of the Mullen Road. About a mile off that way. What'd they string him up for? Said he was in league with uh, some sheriff down in Bannock that was robbing shipments of gold out of the out of the fields. Out of the Alder Gulch. My um, gold pan fields. Folks didn't really stand up for him in town because he was kind of new and we all didn't really know him that well. He'd only been in town for a couple of months. Came riding in with his group of men, bought an old saloon, and took it over. And then about a month later, vigilance committee came in looking for him. So I think that I do remember that as she's talking about it, and um, mm -hmm. and I ask her. So these old same men, the, the men that hung them, they they all had sack sackcloths on their face, right? The men that came um, upon them. Yeah, and the because and the the men that hung too. They put they put them over them before they hung them. So he's long dead. He certainly would, well, should be. I don't know. This, this is a might. To... Back into uh, Mr. Bennett's. Kind of looks specific. Uh, my companions. Does anyone know where this captain of theirs is? It might be in our best interest to find him these things are going to keep coming after him. Uh, everyone kind of looks at each other and shrugs. The John Williams, that I recall. Major Owens kind of goes, um, don't know where he is, but, uh, I did hear he, uh, sort of quit after 64 having anything to do with the committee and got himself a farm somewhere. That's all I know for sure. Said he didn't want to have any part in killing no more. He ought to be getting on in years now. Back in 64, 20 years ago, Just about the time that uh, I took off from this place. Yeah. Seems like a good time to vamoose. He's well, uh, Haddock. Um, uh, Josephine says, "Let's get everybody inside." Yeah. Just maybe in case. I can take a look. Take a look at that eye, Amy. I've got a 
the doctor's uh, bag there. Seems like oh, you felt the, you felt that cold. It was just, I mean, oh. it, it's just a scar. I just, I, you know, I kicked back from a rifle, a little, little more than I could handle. That's all. It's fine. Doesn't it, doesn't hurt. Just a little ugly. <laughs> Think it makes Mrs. you look Haddock, rugged. Do you have a mirror um, somewhere in the house? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, Amy, you might want to go look in that mirror. Something's changed. Sorry, my lack of poker face coming out. <laughs> you go take a look in the mirror, and you see one eye has gone completely bloodshot. Like, almost every vessel in the eye has burst, and the whole eye on that side of your face is just red like the devil. It's kind of look into the mirror and just stare at it and kind of sends a shiver through me as I, I put the pieces together of where, where that likely came from. No. Nope. Guess a uh, souvenir of this wonderful bonding experience, I guess. It's right, Amy. Girls really like a guy with character. <laughs> you got plenty of that, Jim. While that's going on, I will uh, walk up to, to Bob and take a look at him and go, where'd you pick up that fancy shooting iron? Well... Most of my hardware is uh, from much further south of here. I prefer that Lamat boy. He made some uh, some uh, innovative weaponry. Uh, Bob will pull out uh, um, a. I think he'll start with a shotgun since it's uh, just slung over his shoulder. He. I described it as glinting in that fine Montana moonlight before. <laughs> Uh, if you take a closer look at it, uh, there is fine engravings and runic carvings over the barrel. Uh, the wood of the, the butt is not really well decorated, but there is fine, fine filigree that uh, highlights, highlights the metal. He sets it onto the table and uh, asks if well, Clayton, have you ever you ever read any trashy novels? Tall tales of uh, that Doc Holiday? Hell, I read them all, I reckon. You read it often enough. There's uh, a lot of lot to be learned in there. Patterns, runes. There's a depth that uh, can be applied, not just to heroics, but to firewear, firearms. This isn't anything I bought. This is something that I made. Yeah, damn. And that's why I couldn't put down one of those sack men out there, but you seem to have no trouble with it whatsoever. Especially that last one. I can't and... say I've seen such a difference before. That's the first time that's... <laughs> Heck, I wasn't sure that I wasn't crazy. There's Wait. there's a lot to be had in, in Doc's words, but there's a lot that can send one astray, and uh, maybe this is confirmation of that. Did you see the way they just kind of fell apart? Like they were made of fabric and, I don't know, uh, spit? Sackcloth. Mighty peculiar. So you, you're telling me you read a couple books and your gun kills uh, creatures from the dead? It's not just reading. I read the seventh word of every chapter, and that unlocked 
the additional arrows, signs, portents that would allow me to uncover which specific carvings would be useful. It's it's not just reading, it's reading between the lines, reading over the lines. Now, Jem did me a solid when you were suffering from uh, that infestation. She covered up some shuffling that I was doing. And I'm not going to say that it's not unrelated to that. There's other books you can read, and there's other things to be learned. But I ain't even sure that half of it is true. Like I said, this is the first time that uh, these weapons have, have ever been any different to me, and I cannot make any promises about what they might be in the future. For all I know, it was because he had that lariat around my neck. Maybe that was a grounding force that would uh, let me hurt him. I don't know. I don't know if you all heard it, but before that last one disappeared, he made a promise to all of us. He's not gone. He's coming back. And maybe it's not only Williams he's coming back for now. Clayton, Jim, you had any run-ins with these undead or otherwise previously to this? I heard tell of some stuff, you know. Growing up, going from my family's house down in New Orleans, meeting with my mama's family, you know, across the uh, Sioux Nations. I heard all kinds of stuff, but, you know, I uh, ain't never seen anything that was straight up evil. Everyone, everyone knows stories. That's what kids do. And otherwise, we tell stories, but... You know, and old men says, says Major Owens, we tell stories too. I don't, I don't mean to point a finger, but we haven't been uh, running in this stuff until Mr. Seventh Word of Every Sentence showed up with our group. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Morrow, you're, you're a kind fellow and, and, uh, I've enjoyed our company, but I hope that there's no correlation here. I have not been good luck for anyone. Ever. Hell, now you're starting to sound like me. Yeah. Look here, Amy. Look here, Amy. I think we knew what we were getting into when we come back here. I think uh, this place is no good. Just maybe... As kids, we didn't know how no good it really was. I think it's just easy to, uh, maybe so it's what just do you easy to try and grasp for an ex explanation when there might not be one at all. So, so what do you guys think that, that, si I mean, Sour Skinner, he, he was, he was dead, right? Killed like 20 years ago. Didn't look that way, ma'am. No, the, um, that was uh, John Owen. Uh, oh, sorry. Said that. Um, Got to work on my voices. <laughs> my old man voices. He goes, now, huh. Now, you know what? 20 years ago, Morgan Bennett, who was a young man back then, yeah. He used to play with them. Gemini. Yeah. He's uh, working as a ranch hand, I think. That sort of thing. Sort of a handyman even back then. He looks up with a surprised look. I think he was the feller who had buried him. I'm sorry, what? Morgan Bennett. Morgan Bennett, and he goes, well, God dong it. He sits back. Morgan Bennett and Russell Howe. They're best friends since childhood, right? Russell was always a bit of a layabout, never much good for nothing, but he followed Morgan around. Morgan always slit him a little extra work here and there. But I recall 
back 20 years ago folks after there was after Cyrus Skinner and the and his men were all hung folks in Hellgate they was afraid to take him down Morgan being the soul he was couldn't abide that after a couple of days he's the one who cut him down and found him a spot a patch of ro uh, patch of ground by the road and buried him it was frozen so he just kind of piled rocks on top of them both and then filled it in with dirt later you'd see Not the mountains of rocks apparently you could see you could see the the rise in the earth alongside the moral road there for years after everyone kind of knew it was that was skinner's grave seems like bennett did skinner a kindness yeah, I wonder why he came after him. Assuming that, uh, assuming that, that was him. There? Should be. He kind of looks out the window. You want to check it out? Maybe in the morning? Kind of gives a sheepish smile. Or or now. Trying to read the room. I think the morning's fine. By me. I think the rest of y'all wanted to go back to that uh, spooky hill, no? Listen, Amy, you know, we've we've had kind of a rough night. I don't think <laughs> oh, I was I was certainly I not being serious, no. Jim. And I like look over at him, realizing that he was just poking fun. And I roll my eyes and I'm like, you always thought you were so funny. Using humor to hide my trauma. <laughs> Sad clown. Yes. <laughs> yes. Josephine had, uh, Josephine Haddock goes about making sure that there's um, floor space or bed space for all for each of you, making sure there's blankets and pillows and uh, to account for everyone. Um, there's technically only about three beds worth in that in the house, um, so a couple of you guys have to take a floor or a couch or something. Um, but the rest of the night passes pretty much uneventfully unless there's any particular conversations you wanted to do that night. Now, assuming not, come morning, you wake up to the smell of uh, war of um, bacon frying and something baked and some sort of fresh bread rolls or something coming out of the of an oven. You're not sure how much how much earlier than the rest of you. Uh, Josephine's been up, but she's been up for a while. Does it take uh, much for uh, Mama's cooking to, to get me up out of bed? Come down and help out if I can. All right. And uh, you find her there, and she's busy kind of packing you guys um, in addition to uh, uh, preparing a breakfast for you. She's packing uh, some food to, for the road for you as well, something that'll keep, something edible, even when it gets cold. Because I assume that uh, if you're heading out to the grave, that uh, I'm not sure how long you're going to be there, but I want to make sure you have something to eat. It's not too far away. Uh, I ain't leaving. She says that very pointedly uh, as you guys sit down to start eating. Just so you know, I ain't scared. I'll hold my ground. I'm having you the toughest woman I ever Dan met. All right. I just want to cut. I just want to cut off that conversation right here and there. She gets back to the fixing the rest of the food. After you guys have eaten. I'm assuming apparently and in, mostly in silence. Um, uh, by the time your guys are done, Major's already got the uh, horses all uh, tacked up and ready to, to ride out. He's borrowed a shovel from uh, uh, Mama Haddock as well. Just in case. When I, when are we, so are we saying goodbye? We're riding out? We're heading out? I don't know. It's up to you. Are you guys done? 
Yeah. Are you hanging around? Okay. All right. So I would like to, on my way out the door, uh, present my hand to Mama Haddock, like give her a hug, but then like grab her hand mm -hmm. and kiss it. And then as I uh, as I bid her adieu, I like look over my shoulder at Amy. <laughs> and go, if you want to go to that spooky hill, I'm feeling might fortified. Saying that to me or her? To you. <laughs> she stands on the. Uh, sorry. Nope. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I was just going to say, Josephine stands on the porch until you guys uh, can uh, and keeping an eye on you as you ri as you ride off until you are no longer visible. And uh, you, uh, every time you look back, she's still standing there on the porch, keeping a watch. Uh, yeah, before before we do head off, I'll say a goodbye too and, and say, uh, it's good to be back home. And uh... She nods and she says, well... It's always been here, ain't always been home, but it's waiting for you when it is. No. Well, hopefully, we can figure some things out here sooner than later, and maybe it'll uh, become home once again. Your father would have liked that. I'll be back soon take care I will I know ain't me I'm worried about she says kind of shrugs it off you head off okay you ride out major it's not that far it's only about a mile away she uh, ride uh up back towards where Hellgate Village used to be. Uh, as you approach to the land, as you as you ride off in that direction, the landscape becomes more and more familiar. You see uh, scattered remnants of foundations of old buildings. Uh, sometimes even like a whole side of a wall or a corner. But these places have either been stripped of everything that could be taken or burned down or fell over in inclement weather and just never bothered to, uh, no one's bothered to come over and repair them. The abandoned buildings sort of flapping in the breeze as you can to this spot perhaps if you kind of pushed everything together you could make one solid structure out of everything that remains um, it is quite um, a shock to see its state now as you go riding slowly through the skeleton of the town you grew up in And then he, uh, Major, leads you all a little bit further down Mullen Road. About another quarter mile out of town on the far side. Points to a place where the road kind of veers upward. A little, creating a little bend, a little nook before it crosses the another pit part of the river. And points to off to the side and the what you assumed originally to be some sort of a drainage ditch or something. He says, right down there. That's where he, uh, that's where they buried him. What does it look like from here? Disturbed? You see, uh, you see a pile of, uh, yeah. Disturbed dirt and rocks. Not much you can make out from up here. You have to get down and Take a closer look. Now I'd uh, think I'd prefer to keep my distance, but <laughs> I don't know what uh, what amount of good that's going to do. You do 
Everybody just kind of sit there staring at that patch of ground. I'm kind of freaked out. I don't think I want to, like, go near it first. <laughs> All right. Clay and Mara, how about the two of you? After a moment, uh, Major kind of goes, well, um, want to go back? Do I, um, I finally kind of collect myself and I start like kind of like looking around. Do I see anything that like brings back like any kind of like feeling or get any like weird vibes from the area at all? Uh, like I know it's it's spooky and it's in, it's like decrepit looking around me, but like, is there anything personally that like I'm? Uh, nothing is jumping out at you at the moment. Okay. Other than the general creepiness and skeletal nature of the remnants of the town. Okay. So I want to I want to like go near the patch and take a look at it. Okay. If, if um, Bob can sneak up to you just before you do that, I think he he leans in over his horse once again and double dare you. <laughs> like puff up my chest a little bit and I like stride over with like renewed semi calm, still freaking out inside. But um, I don't know. I just go over there. Hang on, Jim. I grab. Grab him by the wrist. Say, uh, you know, this was our town back in the day. Let's, uh, let's pay a visit together. I go down and walk along with him. And okay, notice rolls to just generally scour the area for information. Survival rolls if you're specifically looking for tracks or signs of uh, of. Life having moved through the area, that sort of thing. Okay, I'm gonna roll survival then. I'm gonna roll notice. Okay. All right. So, uh, Jim, as you approach the um, the spot where the graves are, the sort of, you can kind of clearly make out the general shape of them of some moundy area. You see boot prints in there. There are sections of freshly turned earth, uh, and you see boot prints in that dirt. A lot of the other dirt around here is dry and kind of the sort of dust that you see on the long side of the road. But mm -hmm. um, there is some deeper, uh, moist ground that's been curled up, um, or it's, it was curled up, although it appears to have dried out. You know, it's not like freshly like turned over this morning or let or even as recently as last night. But you can definitely see some sort of tracks around the graves here. OK. Um, Morrow, with the, your successful uh, notice uh, and Amy, you guys, you, you did one as well. Uh, you spot. Um something out of place just off the away from the the graves themselves like thrown into a bush nearby you, you see that Bob I do uh, as you or me gonna check it out as both I think you saw it first so <laughs> <laughs> You're smarter than I am. Uh, Bob will uh, hop off his horse uh, and get on down to those bushes, approaching without weapons in his hand, assuming that's something material rather than uh, a person or a thing. You find, because this is an easier go, I mean, um, you get over there and kind of thrown into the bushes, um, almost a, like an afterthought. There's a shovel. And it looks, looks like, like we it's the first ones here to do excavation. And it looks like it's been here exposed to the weather, to the elements for 
a while, uh, uh, long enough to begin to rust. It's not completely rusted or anything like that, but you can see that it is uh, been sitting out here in the uh, to the elements for for a while, uh, a couple of a couple weeks or longer. Perhaps? No, oh, okay. a couple not, of weeks. Not twenty years ago. Okay. No, no, a couple of weeks, maybe more. Bob returns to everybody else that's mounted, uh, holding up the shovel as as he returns. Amy. This wasn't last night sort of uh, digging up. This happened a while back. Uh, Jim, you get over to the graves themselves proper now. You want to give it a more close inspection? Yeah, definitely. Okay. want to okay. see, like, especially like where the boot marks are either from or headed. Right. Sure. Give me another survival check. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, you happy with Rick that three? Benny, please? Absolutely. Rick Benny. Not. All right, re-roll <laughs> that. Aid from the spirits coming in. Give me another roll. There we go. Oh yeah. Eleven hitting a raise. Okay. Um, you can tell that the those boot prints appear to be the same boots all over the whole the whole site. You don't see you, know, you don't see any multiple tracks. You just see one pair of boots that are kind of around the whole place. They seem to be uh, located right around the spots where the graves themselves have been disturbed. Um, you see also marks in the dirt of the uh, correspond to that rusty shovel that uh, Mara pulled out of the bushes. And with that, you kind of brush away a bit in, uh, uh, here and there and looking into the defiled graves, you can see bits of bones sticking out from within the graves as if the bodies are still there. The tombstones? Uh, no, bits of bone sticking yeah, out. I'm, of the... I'm saying though, are there like tombstones or are these all like pretty much unmarked? They're all unmarked. Um, okay. but you spend some time. I'm gonna because you because of that raise. You spend some time kind of going over it, and you figure, based on the way the graves are aligned and the um, and the bits that you see sticking up of the uncovered parts, you're seeing pretty much the the neck bones of uh, uh, from every grave. What you're not seeing. Or any of the skulls. Okay, so I call everybody. I call everybody over. Like, obviously, Amy is not too far off. So I'm like, hey. All these guys, their heads been missing. Somebody came up in here and desecrated all of these bodies. And with that, we're going to go to break. Quick, yes, open your eyes. We've arrived, my friends, to a place of such abundance and beauty like none have ever seen before. Misty Mountain Gaming has all you could ever need for your tabletop role-playing accessories. Metal dice, acrylic dice, dice trays, and many other tabletop role-playing accessories can be found within the halls of MistyMountainGaming.com. The forge is always hot. The tanners and tailors always working to create new and improved equipment for adventurers such as yourselves. And just for joining us on this journey, take 10% off of your entire cart with the coupon code VALOR at checkout, saving you a little extra gold for that tankard of ale waiting for you at the inn. So grab what you need and start your journey now by heading to MistyMountainGaming.com where you too can find the treasure of a lifetime. Hey folks, uh, we're all in the weird places right now. That's okay. That's life. 
we're just going to roll with it. So where we last left off, you would discover that all the graves uh, here on the side of the road have been dug through and their skulls removed. What are you going to do with that information? This is the grave. What What were the other... So we know that one of these was Cyrus Skinner. Do we know who the other graves may belong to? You know that four other men were were tried, okay, and, tried and hung with Cyrus Skinner. Okay, and they all... Did Bennett and, and, and Russell bury them as well? From what you understand, yeah. Okay. They, they took it upon themselves to take down the bodies and, and bury them. But they didn't like you know, have didn't like take them to a, a, a proper graveyard or anything like that. They just found a spot on the side of the road and piled them up with rocks. Mm-hmm. And it was the it was it was still middle of winter, ground was frozen and rock hard, and so they just kinda like covered them up and then later on in the thaw came back and threw extra dirt and whatnot on it. Would it take like a survival roll or something like that to determine how long ago these uh, these graves were dug up? You could certainly try that with an uh, for and get an estimate. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not very good at survival, but I'll give her a go. Okay. Uh, Three is not enough. You you shrug your shoulders. You're not really sure. Bob, you. uh... Oh, the shovel you, you a... found, you uh, said that's a good few weeks, you think? No more than that. Between it's... four, uh, two to four weeks, based on the rest on it. So it's not, uh, not been too long. Uh, hmm. how, how long ago was... Uh, how long ago was Morgan killed? Uh... Uh, it's only been about a couple of days. Okay. Uh, if that, uh, four right? days. Yeah, Russell was three day, uh, three weeks ago. Okay. This may well be conjecture, but I see two problems here with these graves. The first is that it happened during winter, and they didn't see fit to, or weren't able to provide them with a proper rest. Six feet below with markers but I reckon that ain't the cause I think a bigger problem is the fact that these men these men have a burn in them much the way Mr. Metaggart does I reckon I reckon they're still hungry for revenge for justice what is what does what does Bennett and and Ru- what does Morgan and Russell have to do with it? Just because they're the ones that put them in the ground? Like, like I said, I reckon they did them a kindness. I reckon they helped. So, I'm just as confused about that as you are. Just a just a uh, piece of the puzzle, a a point along the way of, of trying to find this this Captain Williams, I guess, right? I think he's a pretty big key. If uh, if he doesn't have the answers, then perhaps we can uh, deliver him as uh, some sort of answer to not just their questions, but uh, to their thirsts. So, that little visit last night... Unfortunately, I I assume that they went after Morgan and Russell and asked the questions they asked us, and those, uh, they weren't able to handle themselves, maybe didn't have as much luck as we did, and, uh, we would have just end up just the same as them otherwise, so... Or the, the, them fancy irons that you got there, Mr. Mr. Morrow, says, uh, Major Owen. Oh, yeah, that, that seventh word in the sentence thing, yeah, yeah. Now, keep in mind that seventh word of a sentence is just opening the door to the larger rooms. Everyone can give me an occult roll, if you got it. I don't. I will not. Uh, 
All right, so Clayton, you go all the five, and so did Jim. You guys both know this about uh, ghost stories and, and, and just general uh, knowledge of weird, spooky stories going around. Uh, when in stories about revenants, things that come back from the grave searching for revenge, if they're something that claws up out of the dirt, uh, you're generally not going to find bits of them left behind here. If you're going to see, uh, however, with what you saw, the intangibility and the and the cold, deathly, chilled touch, it makes you think of stories of spirits of the dead more than physical recreation, uh, walking dead, as we call it. Um, and in ghost stories, there's a couple of different things you can usually do to deal with such spirits. Um, usually weapons of them, of uh, some sort of important, something to do with their deaths are usually very important. Weapons that, um, uh, of a, of an, uh, blessed nature are often mentioned, you know, uh, weapons, uh, or otherwise magical enchantment. And then a common one is, uh, uh, banishment through the use of salt and the like. All these three things all occur to you. Um, wh whether any of that's going to be of particular use in this situation would re require further testing. Marshall, you said that the the skeletons are here sans heads. The, the skulls yes. are the only things missing. Okay. Yes, that's correct. And you can find bits of fabric, scraps of uh, even a couple uh, bits of old sackcloth in, in the graves as well, um, confirming that they were buried with their hoods on. Mr. Morrow, if uh, we uh, anything those books you read or otherwise say anything about uh, maybe bringing those those skulls back to these bodies. As I said, this was one of my first tests with, well, I don't want to call them folk, but this kind of things. And it seems that, uh, uh, Jim has, has more information than I do regarding this. It's, uh, I'm used, <laughs> that is the wrong word. I'll never be used to uh, the dead rising, but uh, I've heard tell of that. This is, well, this is another thing entirely. Marshall, do I see which way the tracks are leading off to? Unfortunately, once they get back to the road, it's such, uh, they lead back towards the Mullen Road, and once they hit the road, that section is so heavily traveled and so packed that you quickly can't fall, see anything more than a couple hours into the past along that road. Uh, and you're pretty sure that this had to have been weeks ago when the when the graves were dug through. Can I, uh, I'd like to explore like the remnants of the town and see if anybody made camp in the area or something. Okay. Yeah, sure. It'll be a take it would take a, about an hour. Y'all want to help me figure out if uh there were some folks staying around here. I don't I don't really like staying around this area. Reminds me of my childhood a little bit more than maybe I'd want, but I think we uh we got a beat out on whoever disturbed these graves. I'd, I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, I'll help you look. Maybe it can uh, give us some indication of where this Captain Williams may have his farm. All right, so uh, again, give me uh, notice or survival rolls um, to look around the town for any other signs of recent um uh, inhabitants or disturbances about the place. Okay. 
So as you look around, you can you definitely can tell that there doesn't look like anybody's living here. Uh, you can't find any sign of a campsite or a bedroll or anything like that. And that's particularly set up. Um, not anything recent, at least. You do find a few patches of uh, old ash where maybe perhaps someone on a wagon train stopped here. You know, along the way. Um, you do spot a couple places off the road where those same boot print boot prints show up. Uh, down in the hole, they're pretty stationary and it's kind of hard to get a good read. But the pace of these boots out here in the open would let you think that this is a very tall individual. The, the stride is very long and wide. Um, not a small footed person, certainly. I mean, but, you know, just the boot size alone is not enough to tell you how big a person is. Seeing how the, how long their stride is really kind of confirms it for you. Okay. Is, this is, uh, Marshall, this is the, the place where the incident happened a long time ago. Yes. Mm hmm. Okay. But what you do find as you follow these boots is a spot where perhaps uh you see where a an old crate or something an old um, box has been brushed off and used as a place to sit down and beside it kind of just kind of behind it is an empty bottle of uh whiskey that the label is still fairly fresh a little bit weathered by the sun but otherwise recently drained and abandoned Again, maybe a couple weeks to a month ago. Okay. Bob will make note of the brand and type. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's bourbon. I don't know if it's rye whiskey. But uh, that's okay. that's part of an investigator's clues. All right. Marshall, did we... Uh, yes, right here. Um, at Bennett Sites, there was a tall man... That we ran into, I think, was it us or was that, um, oh, the, the girl, the gal from the hotel, was that in her story? I forget if we, yes, did? yes, it was. That was her story. We didn't experience that, right? No. Okay. Um, okay. Right. You get a Benny. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, sweet. Thanks. thanks folks Ooh, over at Peg. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Peggy. Welcome to the table. Absolutely. Do you guys uh, and congrats, congrats to Amy for putting that together. That was the that the tall man was who she saw sort of across the yeah, street. Well, Jim, Jim, right? what was like, that gal's name? You were all smitten as you are with any any tall gal. Fella. You mean Betty? Betty, yeah. Mm -hmm. She was telling us about a stinky old tall man that. Gave came in, GBs, yeah. Came into the, yeah. the into the Occidental asking about Morgan Bennett. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean it's something. Hey, actually, said he. Uh, I think she said it. He smelled something fierce of of the sauce. Didn't act like it was bothering him, but. Maybe uh, we used to be in that bottle there. I reckon it might be. It might could be. And if he's out here taking skulls, I wonder if he's trying to get, uh, I don't know, get something going. Every single one of these bodies is missing. I don't, uh, I don't know what he could be up, up to this person, but some tells me it ain't looking good. How I'm long gonna... did they say Russell uh, Russell Russell killed himself? Three weeks back. Mm-hmm. Three weeks looks like about the time that this person uh, lit out back on over to to Missoula. I'm 
I'm going to turn to the major and uh, say to him, who else from back then is still around? Anyone who potentially, I don't know, would have been allied with the, uh, the departed here. Anyone who the, uh, the Vigilance Committee might not have been uh, exactly close with. Do you know of anyone in the area who uh, potentially could be involved with such a thing? Oh, uh, I don't think so. I mean, by the time the dust settled in 64, there was not more than 20 people left at all in Hellgate. And all of them moved to Missoula after the uh as soon as there was some other place to move to the people did not want to stick around here that much longer kind of got kind of soured the whole establishment you understand um i think uh of the folks that are left let's see uh there was russell and Morgan, your mother. He looks over at Amy. Um, there's Joe, who runs the Occidental. Um, Frank Woody, uh, the mayor. Um, Warden and uh, Higgins, the guys who run the the uh, the the, the, the Warden and Higgins Company. And he lists off a couple other people here and there. Comes to about. 10 people or so that are left from those days. Because none of them are particularly, you know, criminal <laughs> that I know of. That's an important distinction there, though, guy. That you know of. Well, yeah. I mean, how do you really know a person other than, you know? You said... No criminal connection backgrounds? No. I don't. I mean, I mean Russell and I mean, Russell was a bit of a foot dragger, but he wasn't he wasn't crooked or nothing. And Morgan certainly wasn't. I, I don't think that's what it is at all. I think it's just. I think it's just our connection to this place. I'm wandering around a little bit as well, and I come to a boardwalk mm -hmm. and just lock up. Oh, yeah. I see, I see where he's going, and I kind of am keeping an eye, an eye on him as we're, like, you know, walking around town and everything. And I've been purposely avoiding that whole area. And I see him go over there. And, um, like, I run after him. I say, Amy, 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 Amy. Uh, let's focus on the task at hand, man. Let's, let's focus. Hey. <gasps> what? What? Clayton. Um, mm -hmm. no, go, go, sorry, go, go on. Finish your... No, I was just saying, you know, it's all, it's all right, man. It's all right. Don't, uh, don't linger here, man. Don't linger here. Yeah, I think, I think we should be moving on. Clayton, you spot off in the distance, and you've been kind of, like, quiet about it, but you spot a wagon kind of, like, coming down the Mullen Road away from out of Missoula and, uh, kicking up a lot of dust as it, as it goes. Like, it's, it's moving at a high speed. Yeah, at this point, I'll I'll point off in the horizon and say, "Y'all, y'all see that wagon? A wagon out around these parts?" Well, the Mullen, Ro the Mullen Road is still used as a pretty good connection point. Um, if you know, if you're trying to move stuff cheap, you know. And you guys looked at sure enough, you look down the uh, the Mullen Road in the direction of Missoula and you see this, you all see this dark spot of, uh, coming closer and, um, we're moving pretty, 
fast, actually, uh, faster than he th was usually a person is. I mean, they're certainly not trying to pace themselves on the road. Uh, major, major. Sorry, I'm a little rattled. Um, what would be? You sat atop a wagon for a bit. What what would be hauling ass like that out of town? Just I don't know. Unless it's like a don't look like a stagecoach. So it's not pony. It's not like mail or anything. And most of that comes on the train nowadays. I want to pull my rifle around and look down the scope. See if I can get any better vantage with that. Oh yeah, you can see uh, see somebody. You see a a man. Um, with uh, um, what you assume to be um, another a woman, maybe his wife, and a couple of other people, kind of like all crammed into the wagon, a bunch of stuff loaded into it. Looks like uh, boxes, bags, suitcases, chairs, furniture. Clampets are moving, huh? You wait for about. 15, 20 minutes and the wagon kind of like comes close enough where you could actually call out to him. Uh, and they kind of like, they slow down as they see you guys, especially since you have your rifles out, they cautiously kind of uh, bring it down to a, a bit more of a, um, uh, or a slower uh, pace as they come rolling up and they, and they, they look down and they go like, howdy folks. No, just just moving through. No trouble. Moving indeed. What's uh, what seems to be the hurry? He kind of looks back and says, "We're getting out of Missoula. Something's something's got a grip back there, and uh, we don't plan to stick around to see what it is. Not uh, tight enough to have time to stock up the whole house. It looks. We took what we could." You from you from Missoula? Yeah, sort of. Well, don't go back. Found another one. Another body. And this or time, another hanging. This time, no one believes the sheriff's story. Ain't no suicide. Something's in the town's all in an uproar. You should see Ooh. the crowd outside the rail station. Who was it? Uh, Joe runs the Occidental. Whole town's in a panic. How do how'd I, they find him? Hanging. Yesterday, uh, yesterday morning. No. Right after the funeral. If you don't mind, uh, we're trying to make French Town by uh, nightfall. I'm gonna kick up. Y'all be stiff on the road. And they take off. Amy, you need to get your mother out of here. She ain't gonna go anywhere. But. Listen, Amy, I know you're worried about her, but she said up till now she ain't seen nothing on that farm, and I think those men were there for us, not her. Oh, I know. I think we need to Maybe get ahead of this. Maybe we need to head back on into town and uh, see what there is to see out there. There might be somebody else who's next. Jim, you and I, we're on that list. I can guarantee it. And I think you might be right. So, Mr. Morrow, maybe I uh, owe you an apology for pointing a finger your way for our troubles. There isn't any need for that. I'm only here because if I ain't the bad, if I'm not the bad luck, then I'm here for the bad luck. There's, there's a whole lot of people five. from that time that are disappearing. And um, I would prefer that neither of you two were the next ones on the list. 
I saw that, Marshall. <laughs> you definitely, as you head, as uh, I'm taking that as a cue that you guys all head back towards Missoula. Yep, heading mm -hmm. east. Um, John Owen says he uh, you follow the road. Um, he'll take you there if you uh, if you put your mind at ease. I can head back to the farm and keep an eye on your ma for you. Major, I would... Don't you go getting sweet on her. S smack Jem in the <laughs> arm very hard. Major, I would be very much appreciative of that. Alright. I'll do that. And um, if we see or hear anything, I'll let you know. Just uh, be ready. She'll work you hard. He nods, kind of. Um, he goes, uh, "You want to? I can't afford the rent on the pony. You want to take it back to town for me, and uh, I'll walk to the farm from here. We'll handle that. Take yeah. take it with you. We'll handle it. Oh, oh, okay. All right." He takes the pony, heads back towards a uh, haddock farm. And you guys ride back to Missoula. It's about five hours from here. And uh, any conversation that's had along the way between you, or do you ride mostly in silence? I would. I, uh, what do you, yeah, Amy. I, I was just going to say. I would think that we're kind of, we're moving. I think okay. uh, there's some heavy heads of steam and focused. All right. Uh, yeah. So as you come. I, uh, I, I keep an eye on Amy, though. I'm a little worried after that incident. So I do make sure he's in a good place. Uh, the As you come r riding along the Mullen Road, it brings you out kind of like on the far uh, south side of town as you come riding up along closer to the the railroad as you kind of when you come into town and sure enough like the people you saw on the wagons the uh, there appears to be a large group of people uh, a, a crowd perhaps even a throng or a, a mob one might say of people uh, yelling and screaming and pushing and jockeying for position along the railroad platform um uh and you can sense the the feeling of panic washing over them all as they as you see the shutter to the railroad ticket office is being is being shut and the guy saying I ain't got no more room no more tickets for sale sorry folks And the people are beginning to yell and scream and about and, and you hear all sorts of shouting going on and cursing at the guy's name and saying, You're lying. Clayton, say so, yeah, we go pay a visit to that uh the marshal. And do. This one might be I mean, if I might Mr. throw it out there as the marshal. Mr. This if anybody if Mr. Might Haddock, wanna, if 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 I might suggest, uh, this crowd could be calmed. Bob is not the right man to do it, but uh, if you can bring any peace or reassurance to these people. Uh, these people do seem is, panicked like they the don't know time. what's going on. Perhaps a good explanation of what's going on, even if it isn't necessarily soothing to their soul, understanding is a little makes things a little bit easier. To deal with and you folks did see us something that explains it all last night even you could say defeated it i uh i kind of stand up on the i stand up on like um is there like maybe like a box or something next to the the window that the guy oh, yeah. is trying to like drop on the clothes yeah up? yeah sure so i kind of stand up and i say hey people in masula calm down we uh we rode out last night, ran into some some thugs out on the outskirts of town. One of them may uh 
Might have might have slipped by, but we made sure all of them were put down this morning. Don't worry about it. None of y'all are in any kind of danger. I say sit tight and uh, we're going to go ahead and consult with the sheriff. Give me a persuasion roll. Or a performance if you'd let if you'd rather. Yeah. Take, take a plus one. Yeah. All right. Take a plus one. Make that a race. Um, people. The screaming seems to stop. People don't necessarily give up on the belief that getting out of Missoula is a, a, a good a th a thing. They, uh, some people grumble like um, and uh, kind of but and others begin to like back away and uh, whisper to each other about oh it's, they say that um, they say that they got him got him really are you sure and the, the crowd just seems you can feel this sort of like cresting wave of panic begin to subside it's not gone it's still there and they're, everyone's still really tense but they're not certainly trying to bash in the window of the ticket office anymore I kind of yell to the ticketer and I say, hey, when's the next train out of here that you do have tickets for? You sold out through the week or? Just, yeah, um, uh, every, the train comes through, uh, it comes through every other day and the next three trains, I ain't got, a, ain't got an empty seat on them. So I look back out at everybody and I say, hey, uh, everybody, if for some reason you're still feeling like your issues are unaddressed by your sheriff or by anybody in this town. Y'all can start lining up for tickets end of the week. See if uh, you can get out of here next week. But before then, I reckon y'all are safe. I know I ain't leaving. All right. With that, the crowd sort of dissipates by, by, by about half kind of wander off grumbling to various uh, nearby saloons or their homes. As the crowd begins to thin, one person kind of remains, doesn't seem like the panicked type. And unlike the others who are all carrying luggage and all their worldly belongings with them at the rail station, you see one person kind of standing there with like a, almost a, you'd say a, a proud smile on their face is uh, Miss Virginia, the woman in the gray who was uh, who you met at the hospital, who was tending to the the sick there. And she and she walks forward to you, Jim, uh, after that. And she goes, that was a that was a significant show uh, sign of restraint you uh, you did there. Pretty good. Pretty good with your words, aren't you? Thank you, ma'am. I, I consider myself uh, a bit blessed to try to make sure everything uh, always runs smoothly for people that I deem worthy. You know, uh, this town never did nothing to me, so just trying to, trying to do good. And I kind of smile at her a little bit. He goes, well, you should be proud. I don't think... Uh... I don't think there's anybody who could have. Uh, I didn't think there was anybody who was going to be able to turn that mob into some into folk that would be quiet and just wait and see. I was getting pretty worried. Not well, about myself. We need myself. to go see the man in charge that should be here managing this mob. Uh, do you know why the sheriff isn't here? Uh, sheriff didn't take this last revelation all that well from what I understand he has something of a problem with the drink fantastic what uh what my may I ask uh what are you doing out here Miss Virginia are you trying to flee town I know you got a lot of interests in, at, at, uh, at stake here and wouldn't be like you to run away from a problem oh no 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 I was came out here to see if I could try and control the situation, but they weren't going to listen to me. I could see that pretty quick. 
Anybody who wouldn't listen to a woman as beautiful as you is a damn fool. Well. In these uncertain times, I'm sure you wouldn't want to see a woman unescorted walking through town. No, ma'am. Puts out, puts, out, puts out an elbow. Yeah, I offer her my elbow. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, where, where? So, Sheriff. Sheriff, uh, here, let's... Uh, he's... Uh, he's found himself at the end of a bottle. Is he going to be there or at his office? I think he's in his office. I'll go with you if you like. Well, I don't think Jim's going to let you go, so... But uh, I'll escort you wherever you need to go, ma'am. Even if it's with Amy here. So tell me more about this daring showdown you had. Oh, ma'am, it was wild. I, uh... (laughs) <laughs> I felt uh, felt the cold clutches of death come toward me. I said, not today, Satan. I uh, banished that evil fiend. Amy here almost died. It was pretty, uh, pretty much a nightmare, but, you know. She does, her arm does go a little bit slack on yours for a moment when she looks over at Amy and sees his eye. She goes, you need medical attention. Nothing but a few bursts. Blood vessels, ma'am. That ain't nothing but a n- nothing but a, a prize wound. He's tough. Look at him. I hear uh, that uh, folks of your nature joy a scar too on a gentleman. <laughs> she smiles. He goes, "Yeah, I understand. Rough and tumble." And she uh, goes back to Jim, and she goes, so, you were saying. And you guys walk through the town. Uh, you pass by the sheriff's office as you um, eventually as you head down Higgins Street. Um, do you... Um, I know Amy's intended to talk to the sheriff. Um, is everybody going to stop here? Are you going to stick together, or are you going to split off into and see uh, Virginia home or I'm doing what she wants to do if she wants to stop at the sheriff's office then we can stop there but if she's like here it is and then wants to go I'm going to go with her no actually she seems to hear the more of that of what's actually going on so she sticks around awesome I'm going straight in and uh, immediately just like looking for the sheriff like calling for him sheriff where are you (laughs) I'm right with, uh, right with Clayton. Very uh, hurried and pointed to that. You see, you find him passed out in uh, one of the cells. Doors wide open, and he, uh, there's a bottle on the on the ground next to him. Um, you know signs of any of the deputies um, here. Uh, you can, uh, other than that, the yeah, place looks kind of a mess. And you, can, you hear um, him kind of mumble something. Stores closed. Come back tomorrow. I pick him up and put him against the wall and like start slapping him in the face to sober him up. What? God, stop it. Hell's coming down on your town and you're drunk in a cell. What the hell's wrong with you? He gets blurry. His his blurry eyes kind of come into focus finally after a moment. He's just like, "Oh, you're back. Great. Just what I need. Damn right, it's just what you need. Somebody else to do your job, apparently. What am I supposed to do? Got some sort of mad killer walking around my town. What am I gonna go asking?" Everybody knocking on every door, asking who's got a rope. Just so happens we might happen to know who this mad killer is and what their motivations could be. Yeah, can they walk through walls? You wouldn't believe the answer to that question if I told you. I found Joe Gunderson hanging from the Occidental inside of a locked hotel. Every window, every door locked and barred from the inside. We had to bust open the place just to get in. 
The other night out at, uh, Miss Haddock's farm, I put six bullets in these fellas. One of them didn't want to go down. The other ones poofed into thin air. Kind of looks, he stares at it uh, coldly, looks back at the bottle. He's like, uh, I'm going to smack it away. Is it like in his <laughs> hand or on the table? Re- he's, either way. he's looking down at the one, the empty one down on the floor. Okay. And he's just like trying to, and you see him like kind of like looking around, trying to figure out where he keeps the any others. Yeah. Poof into thin air. Ain't that all I need? Sheriff, you know where Betty lives? Betty over at the hotel. Yeah, yeah, sure. Where? Um, she's one in one of the boarding houses. Um, over on um Pine Street. Is that relatively nearby? Yeah, sure. Okay. He gives you the address if you're, you know. Yeah. So you, you know where that is. And he kind of sits down and he goes, well, it's most like the others. This time ain't no doubt about it. I mean, folks showed up after the funeral. There was, the Occidental was supposed to be a gathering place where people could get together and host a little memorial from Morgan. When they showed up, the place was locked up. Dead quiet. <laughs> dead quiet. Anyway, banging on the place. No answer. One of my deputies managed to look through the window. Saw Joe. We smashed in the, we smashed in the place. Got in. Tried to take it down real quick, but too many people were there. They, they saw. He had a shotgun, laying on the uh, laying on the ground, but it hadn't been fired. But he had pulled it out, like it's a chance it wouldn't have done anything. I don't know. Couldn't really keep it quiet anymore, and this town was just waiting for some sort of... Everybody had suspicions after Morgan died, and this was just one coincidence too far. You know? Old town fell apart. And you know what? I don't blame them. If they want to get out of town, maybe that's a good thing. What are you fixing the... to do, Sheriff? Too old to go anywhere. But population control is not necessarily a bad thing. Too many people here in Missoula already. This will be good. Lessons the suspects. I, I storm out at that. That infuriates me, and I just storm out of the uh, office. Marl, I'm going to check on Betty. You want to come along? I reckon I can follow along, but that sheriff is barking up the wrong tree. He's he's thinking of things that have warm blood. Uh, there's a meaner dog barking at him right now, Clayton. I think... Uh, they well, I don't, reckon out. It's, I don't reckon it's safe for the sheriff, but uh might be best if, if I follow along with you. So Let's go see her. now that I've been left alone with the sheriff uh, at this point, like I and I if I have well, to roll a fighting check for it, I will. But I'll full on like punch him in the face. No, no I after. don't No, There's no fighting check for that. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, this the, <laughs> this is a this is a cowboy movie. You get people get punched in the face all the time. Yeah, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll full on punch him in the face. OK. 
and say, uh, you know, God damn it, if you don't start taking this seriously, what do you think the McClellan boys is going to do with this little bit of information? That in this town's direst state of need, the sheriff was drunk in the jail cell praising the killers. No, hey now, I ain't praising nobody. I'm just saying. Maybe it'd be good to get folks that clearly ain't involved out of town. It'll save their lives. Well, you're in luck, Sheriff, because I'm here, we're here, and we're going to do something about this. Now, how much rope can you get me? Ah, uh, I don't know. And kind of goes, rope? What fur? I got a theory about these things. Something tells me they might have certain vulnerabilities related to things what killed them. Wait, wait, what? What do you mean, what killed them? The dead are walking in your town, Sheriff. Give me a persuasion roll. This is so juicy, you guys. <laughs> uh, I will spend a Benny on that. Okay. Uh, a, a party Benny? Uh, sure. Okay, spent. Reroll. There we go. Five. That's a success. He kind of sit. He um. He sits down very slowly back at the desk. Kind of rubs his jaw where you'd punched him. Looks over and sees a gem and, and Victoria are actually here back. They, they actually didn't say they had left uh, and, are, and we're seeing all of this. He goes, ah. Miss Slade, I'm I'm sorry you have to see me this way. He goes, don't you worry, Sheriff. I'm sorry I have to see it too. He he kind of lowers his gaze. He, he lowers his eyes from her gaze. He goes, yeah. Not living. Well. Ain't that something? Now tell me, Sheriff, who else left in town was around here in 64 when all the hangings happened? He comes up with roughly the same list that, um, that, uh, Owen kind of pointed out. He said, you know, he mentions, um, the mayor of the town, Woody, Frank Woody. He was, he's been here since Hellgate was, the first buildings of Hellgate were put down. Um, Higgins and Warden, they're the guy, they're like the two big richest men in town that basically built the, the mills that, that made Missoula, but they came from Hellgate. And um, he rattles off a list of a few other people. Um, let's see actual names here he's not Moses isn't from no Moses is a fairly transplant. recent transplant yeah um, he um, he he came from Frenchtown he used to run a shop back in Frenchtown and and moved over to Missoula never lived in Hellgate Uh, yeah. Comes up with a list of about eight people, actually. Okay. Now, was the mayor the mayor of Hellgate as well? Well, closest thing I guess we had, you know. It's actually sort of a, used to be a, it was a, yeah, it was a, Hellgate's first mayor county clerk 
lawyer, judge, pretty much did anything, everything around here. He was a judge, you said? Yeah. Oh, hell. We need to get as many people to his house tonight as we possibly can. All right. What do you think they're looking for? I'll be straight with you, Sheriff. They're looking to string up the mayor. Well, yeah, I mean, but who ain't? What these things said at Haddock's farm was... They're looking for Captain Williams, if you've heard of him. And something tells me that the mayor definitely has, based on what I know about this man. Yeah, that name, that name's familiar. I don't think he lives around here no more. Never really did. Mind you. Yeah, Frank would know more about that than I would. All right. Oh. I'll, uh, go get some coffee and see if I can find any of my deputies. They haven't run off already as well. If not, I might have a job for the four of you. I kind of, like, step up or whatever, uh, and I say, well, you know, never uh put our nose up at a good dollar so what you got on the plate well he pulls open a drawer and goes you don't mind tin do you throws a couple of deputy badges on the table i kind of pick mine up and like finger it and turn it over in my hands and then i look over at clayton and i say you gonna give, uh, you gonna give my man Clayton over here a deputy badge? These must be some desperate times. <laughs> I put my badge on, uh, on my duster and say, there's some folks in Deadwood who wouldn't know whether to piss themselves laughing or shit their pants out of fear. They saw me with a marshal, or they saw me with a sheriff's deputy star. Maybe you ought to go out there at uh, that uh, that that ranch. Go see them McClellan boys with that shiny new star. I think you might get your way this time. So, uh, cutting away to Amy and Morrow. Where are you guys heading? You're heading on over to where uh, Betty's uh, Betty's yeah. boarding house, right? It's not that far away. It's only about, a, you know, like I said, Missoula ain't that big, all, despite its population. It's only a, everything's only about two or three blocks away at the most. Um, you get there pretty quickly. Um, you knock on the door. It is a woman's only boarding house, mind you. When you uh, when gentlemen come calling, they're out shown to the parlor on the bottom floor, and that's all the only place they're allowed to be. The woman who runs the place sits you there, and says, "I'll go go I'll go get Betty." Thank you. About five minutes later, she comes down, her eyes very red. You can tell that she's been crying. Not a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> And she comes into the room. She's like, "Yes, I'm Miss Betty." Hi, uh, hello. How, how are you? Did you hear about Joe? Yes. Yeah. So not so good. So we the other night. Ran into some individuals that I think have a big part in all this. And 
Well, anyway, um, that gentleman the other night that you ran into said you just kind of rubbed you the wrong way. I think you said a tall fellow just stunk like the Dickens. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Seen him again at all? She kind of looks confused by the question. She goes, um, not that I recall. Just the one time. Yeah. I'll keep an eye out for him. Is there a reason? Do you think he did this? I think he might be involved. I mean, I'm only going by description, but... I think he fits uh, quite a bit of some of what what we've come across earlier today. And I don't mean to make suggestions that you might know big differences, but any sense of whether he smelt of corn liquor or rye liquor? <laughs> she goes, and Bob, oh, I, Bob is I, thinking back to that bottle that that, yeah. that they found uh, on on the scene, trying I don't to place know. it. it was to just the... some some mighty strong spirit. That's all I could say. Sorry, sir. Can't no, really. You need not apologize for being unfamiliar with that uh, fire water. Betty, remind me again if you can. What was he after? He was looking for some. Was he looking for Bennett? Yeah. Yeah, he was. He wanted, okay. he wanted to know who. Uh, he wanted his. He wanted to know if Morgan Bennett came in there and when or where he could be found. Bob, we got to go find Earl. I think Earl is. Have you, Betty, have you seen Earl in past uh, day? No, not not since the funeral. Do you know if he's not at his shop where he might be? Oh, uh, I just I'm, I mean, I don't have much call to go into the shop, so and he has, certainly hasn't been in the Occidental because of what happened. Understand, understand, absolutely. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time very much. I'm, I'm sorry to hear about... Um, sorry, what was his name again? It's Joe? Joe. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sorry to hear about Joe. Um, but we're going to figure this out. I hope so. Give me a persuasion roll. We'll see whether or not that actually... You soothe her or just worry her. Could Bob leave five silver dollars on the counter before uh, that's made? Just, just to appease <laughs> her, like just to it's a help her strange. out? Strange. Well, okay. Oh, because of lost wages, or, I guess. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah, sure. Uh, I will give it a, a plus one on the roll. Okay. Well, that would be a five. And she goes, she thanks you for your kindness. And uh, she does, she goes, who has been worried, and she admits she has been worried about what, she, what she's going to do now or what's going to happen with the Occidental after all of this. Um, she, and she, she says that uh, she feels like she believes you when you say that you're going to take care of it. She goes, thank you. That's uh, it's reassuring. Thank you very much. And thank you. Meanwhile, back at the sheriff's office, um, Jim, as uh, the sheriff, you put on the badge um, and Clayton puts on the badge. Uh, Virginia's like, well, I see things are in order here. Would the de- would the deputy like to see me back to my ho- my hotel? Yeah, she's looking at you. You're muted. 
You're muted, I think, so we can't hear you. <laughs> yes, was muted. Okay. okay. Correct. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, in in game though, um, I was muted because I'm so stunned by her beauty. <laughs> well played. All right. So um, <laughs> so uh, so I tip my hat and I say yes, ma'am. Uh, right this way, and I I kind of escort her out of the door and we uh, we take a nice medium promenade to her establishment. I ask her, uh, so where about, where about am I taking you? Do you, uh, you live up by your brewery or got yourself a, a nice house somewhere? Marshall, can no. I cut in? I assume yeah. Bob and I would be definitely heading back to the uh, sheriff's office. Uh, let me know if we're going to run into Jim. Okay. Uh, yeah. And her flavor of the I know. I, I have a better mind map of the, of the shape of the town than anybody else. That's for sure. Um, uh, as you might see the two of them walking off as you're approaching the sheriff's office, but they're okay. moving in a different, in the other direction from you. Okay. Um, and I will have, uh, Clayton, you're staying there with the sheriff, right? Making, making sure that he gets a little coffee in him and sobered up proper. Y yep. Okay. Everybody else give me a notice roll. I just, I want to, uh, as I structure this, um, here. You just want to see who sees what. I, I, I'm going to yell out to Jem. Okay. If, if it doesn't like look like there's much, look at those rolls. Wow. Um, to Lordy come out Lord. of it, but just going to give like a single yell uh, towards him. Okay. So yeah, Jem, you definitely see, um, Amy and Bob as you as you're coming out of the sheriff's office, heading, jogging back in your direction, generally, after the, um, from the boarding houses. And he calls out to you. Yeah, yeah, uh, would, would you mind giving me just one moment, uh, Miss Virginia, I'll be right back. And I meet Jamie, I, I meet, I meet uh, Amy halfway, and I'm like, man, don't you see, I'm trying Poor to walk Amy. this fine lady home. <laughs> And um, you guys both notice that Jem is wearing a deputy's badge. It's real shiny. I polished it before I put it on. Well, Take a look, look at that. At you and that tin. So I show off for a minute and then I kind of just like pop theirs at them. And I say, guess who's the law? Just kind of look it over and and just kind of dismiss it throw it in the pocket and say okay li listen jim tom time is not on our side and i'm sorry but i think it'd be in our better interest if you're not uh running around with the fine women of the town i think we need to go check on earl immediately Earl Bennett? Yes. You think something's wrong with him? If not gonna be wrong. It about yeah, to be. But y'all y'all know that uh that Clayton thinks it's gonna be uh the mayor next, right? It doesn't hurt to uh check all angles. We're on Listen, that list I too. I, I I know I'm on that list too, uh, or at least we have suspicion. But I'm going to tell you this right now: if it ain't safe for anybody, damn sure ain't safe for Virginia. And I'm gonna I'm gonna need to escort her home. I won't linger. Don't give me that look. I won't linger. I'll just drop her off and come rendezvous with y'all wherever it is y'all gonna be. How far away from Virginia are you guys having this conversation? If I met Amy halfway and he was like, like ten or you said it was like ten feet away, when he called to me, uh, just just up to you guys. I'm, I'm just... I'd say I'd say probably ten feet away. He like said within earshot or or out of earshot. Is this conversation taking place? I think I would probably want to talk out of earshot so that okay. she's not like offended. Okay. 
And might Bob fill in the gap and just sort of uh, be close to Virginia? Uh, he, he, he was on hand whilst Virginia was healing up um, Amy. So yeah. he trusts her as well. So maybe he could distract her and provide some uh, okay. a little bit of small talk in order to prevent it from being a little bit more, more obvious and, and to give her something to engage with that would make it more difficult for um, Amy and Jim to be heard. Awesome. She seems real interested in um, in uh, something that she apparently heard while you guys were gone. Uh, Clayton talking about um, dead people walking around. Wants to know if you know anything about that. Jem called it in character as feeling blessed and I I would be curious to know if Virginia knows anything about that if I'm speaking honestly I might I might invite her to share any tales that 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 she's heard a woman such as her dressed in such finery and so pure might have a deeper knowledge of these sorts of things and if she were able to provide any insight into how what or why these things might be encountered it would be greatly appreciated now i may be reading that wrong but she seems awfully pure awfully blessed <laughs> maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong i'm i don't know um you say so much in words or uh, le leaning on, on uh, those phrases? Uh, I, I, oh, no, I think I think Bob would actually uh, reference. Uh, Bob would suggest that. Um, this is not the first time he's heard tale of the dead walk before, however, uh, any time they've come up, there has always been people of strong faith that have understood and served as bastions against that sort of evil to protect towns like Missoula. And if there were any of such strong faith within this town it would be appreciated if they might provide assistance to people like clayton says, people like amy and to well, people like jim virginia says well a former soil uh, a former dance hall girl such as myself back in my wild youth would tell you that i am certainly not of that type but maybe the uh, sisters of providence will be more in the direction that you're looking for i understand uh i've also if you're been looking told for someone redemption. to confess your sins to <laughs> uh that list would be far too long for anyone to uh to listen to all right back to the other uh the other conversation uh so amy you're trying to convince Jim to like, yeah, don't waste time with the ladies right now. Right. And Jim, your response is I'll do what I want. My, my <laughs> response is that she's going to walk home alone. Something bad's going to happen to her. It's going to be on me. Okay. So I just look at Amy and I say, I'm not going to be gone long. I'm going to go in for a kiss. However hard that may be. I'm not going to walk her inside. I'm just going to drop her at a front gate. I tail it out of there honor Jamie Amy on my honor uh and, and then you turn away and go back to Virginia no I wait for him to give me a nod okay I would hope that he would not you know it, uh, it, it's like a yeah a heavy sigh just kind of like frustrated um coming in yeah coming into town seeing the chaos I uh, 
starting to at least put some pieces together in my own head of what I think uh, is going on here. Uh, and then with the, with the sheriff, um, you know, I, I have gathered a entirely new focus, uh, and drive towards protecting Mama Haddock, myself and my friends and walking Miss Virginia home doesn't seem uh, to be too important, but I guess, uh, long story short, I would just huff at that and I will give the slightest of nods. All right. So, uh, I, I see this teeny nod and I give him a real big hug. And then I kind of <laughs> back to my lady Don't fair. ruin this for me! <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go, you, you, you turn back to Virginia and you know, walk her and then start walking her back. Turns out um, she tells you that she's, it's not that far. Uh, she uh, doesn't have a house here um, in Missoula being such a recent um, transplant herself um, and buying the, the brewery. She is bought a, a, a nice room at the Windsor Hotel, which um, you got you guys were in uh, two nights ago. The one with the, with the billiard table and all that sort of stuff. It's actually not too far away from the Bennett um, place, actually, right there on Front Street, just on the, the quiet side of Front Street. And she goes, it's close enough to the brewery that I can get my business taken care of, but far enough away that I'm not kept up all night by the singing. Always so sensible, ma'am. You uh, got brains, beauty. You're the whole package. Run your own company. I'm uh, I'm real lucky to be spending time with you, and I hope, uh, hope this ain't the last time I can call on you. No. No. Um, I think this is a very fascinating uh, series of events going on. Uh, Just make sure you're safe. Well, I certainly feel safe. She tightens her 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 her, uh, her arm on yours as you walk her to the front door of the Windsor. And as the camera pulls back from this scene and down the length of the of the street and into the side dark side alley, a tall, thin man in large boots, s- sallow and sunken, eyes glaring at Virginia and Jim as she is seen into the hotel. And that, we're going to call it for the evening. (laughs) All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I will come back to me at the end of this. We're going to start with Clayton first. Say hello to everybody and say, and, uh, Tell them who you really are and where they can find you on the interwebs. Absolutely. So uh, once again, I'm Ryan Howard. I am the host of Rolling Bones with Ryan Howard. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Howard underscore Ryan Gregg. And I do a live show every Monday at 8 p.m. Central at twitch.tv slash Rolling Bones Ryan. One other thing I want to shout out, I was recently on... Uh, the Dungeon Master's Toolkit uh, that was oh. recorded on Tuesday and will be dropping this Friday at 8 a.m. Central. Uh, so that can be found on YouTube. It can also be found on uh, any podcatcher. So uh, everyone go check out Brock's podcast there. Uh, it's a great show. He had me on and we're talking just, uh, you know, tips for making games more fun for yourself and your players. Excellent. Now, I heard that we are going to be graced with your presence on the 20th, unlikely, uh, unlike previously planned. Yep. 
Yep, unfortunately, I couldn't quite uh, financially make Game Hole Con happen this year, so I, oh. I will be back with you guys on the 20th, and I'm looking forward to future conventions where I can meet some of you who uh, enjoy the show here. Well, that convention's loss is my happy gain. Uh, Jameson Jem Freeman, who are you, really? Hey, everybody. Um, you guys can find me, obviously, here every Wednesday uh, playing as Jameson Jem Freeman. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch, Instagram, and YouTube at Candace the Magnificent, all one word. And then on Twitter at That Candace Girl. Keep an eye out in the next couple of days for my very first ice cream review. Oh, oh yeah, we were talking about ice cream right after, right during the break, actually. I'm trying uh, an everything bagel ice cream, so it should be scintillating. Interesting. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Bob Morrow. Hello, Why hunting do they ground. Call you Bob? I have been Bob, aka Bizarre Hands. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I am joining you today from Treaty 4 territory within Canada, the original lands of the Cree, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, as well as the homeland of the Métis. I look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, Amadeus Amy Haddock. Hello all, Todd Moonbounce here. Uh, such a blast uh, tonight. Uh, glad you're all here with us. You can find me on Line, Twitter, and Twitch at Todd Moonbounce. I am one half of the Dungeon Jedi Masters, a podcast and much, much more uh, dealing with everything about the Star Wars 5th edition conversion, including an upcoming radio show actual play that will star our very own Candace the Magnificent. Very looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, so thank you all and hope to see you again next week. All right. One of my favorite little events that I ever saw at a convention, I was at a World Science Fiction Convention, I think it was in San Jose, and I saw a group, a theater group, do a onstage radio production of Star Wars. Awesome. As if it were... Uh, as if it were an RKL radio feature produced in the 1950s where they had recast all of the, the cast of Star Wars as 50s um, movie stars. So they had like, um, so they had Humphrey Bogart as Han Solo oh, and, and then Mickey Rooney as, as Luke Skywalker. Luke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jimmy Stewart as, uh, as uh, Obi-Wan. Uh, I, I I just felt a great disturbance in the force. <laughs> I think my favorite. I think my favorite one. Um, Bella Lugosi as Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Yeah. Yes. I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a really fun show. If you can find it, it was it was it was pretty good. All right, I have been. Uh, your Marshal, Cheyenne Wright. You can follow my work at my website, uh, www.arcanetimes.com. Uh, well, that's my portfolio of all the fine work that I do, including um, uh, a lot of work for Pinnacle and Savage Worlds. Uh, speaking of which, the brand new Kickstarter launches tomorrow for Pinnacle, which is the uh, the Holler Appalachian Nightmare story, which you can... Um, which I've done the Kickstarter video for that. You can tune into that. It's been a lot of fun. Um, other than that, also I've been I'm a regular colorist for Girl Genius, which you can read every, new pages every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at GirlGeniusOnline.com. This past all of this month of October, I'm in addition to doing the color work, I'm also drawing all the pages, uh, while the regular pencil artist, the extraordinary Phil Folio, is out from arm surgery. I've taken up the mantle and doing my best which is important for all of us to do. We see each other suffering, people in need of help. You gotta be there for each other, but also for yourself so that you can be there for other people. Take care of yourself, take care of your, uh, each other, love each other, and thank you for watching.